Ludwig van Beethoven, born of a Flemish father and a German mother, he went through a very difficult and hard childhood, suffered many diseases, a rebel, an innovator who changed the course of music. Not only did he capitulate the classical period into the Romantic, but with his grosser fugue, he laid the path towards the second Viennese school. Misunderstood by his contemporaries, writing music for the future generations, a visionary who extended and elaborated the laws and rules of music in due respect to the old masters Johann Sebastian Bach, Georg Friedrich Handel. He reworked the rules, forms and structures to the maximum. In this video we will investigate the hardship and dedication Ludwig van Beethoven went through using a very difficult, time-consuming and complex way of composing which resulted into the greatest masterpieces ever written. Here we can surely say, no pain, no gain. Before digging into his way of composing, a general overview of his musical studies will follow. Although conservatories existed, Ludwig van Beethoven never studied there, but took private lessons with distinguished composers and musicians. On top of this, he analyzed the works of the great masters before him all of his life. Beethoven was his first teacher. Johann van Beethoven was a Flemish musician, teacher and cantor in the chapel of the Archbishop of Cologne, whose court was in Bonn. Johann van Beethoven taught his son the piano and the violin. who was a German opera composer, organist and conductor. Neve studied music with the composer Johann Adam Hiller. Christian Gottlieb Neve was Beethoven's first full-time teacher. He was teaching Beethoven organ and composition. Franz Anton Ries, German musician who taught Beethoven the violin and gave him early instructions about music. Franz Anton was the father of Ferdinand Ries, who was a pupil, close friend and secretary of Beethoven. Ferdinand was a pianist, composer, piano teacher and conductor. He received his first piano lessons from his father, Franz Anton. Johann Georg Albrechtsberger was an, Aus an Austrian composer, organist and music theorist. He originally studied music at Melk Abbey. He taught Beethoven harmony and counterpoint. Franz Josef Haydn, an Austrian composer. Ludwig van Beethoven started immediately receiving lessons from Haydn in 1793 in Vienna. He studied the strict counterpoint according to the training method Gradus et Paranassum developed by the Viennese church music composer Johann Josef Fuchs. Ludwig finished the whole course in a few weeks and Haydn corrected the approximately 300 exercises. Beethoven received advice on compositions he was working on. Antonio Salieri, Italian composer, conductor and teacher. He initially received lessons from the organist and opera composer Giovanni Battista 
Peschetti, the second organist at San Marco. Salieri thought Beethoven singing essentially for the opera. We had a short overview about a few of his teachers. Now we are going to explain the way how he composed. Ludwig van Beethoven organized his working days with a lot of discipline. He woke up early in the morning and worked without any break until two or three hours in the afternoon. Only from time to time he took little breaks where he used to walk around while continuing working. Afterwards he got lunch and whatever the weather might have been, Ludwig took a long afternoon walk. He used to walk fast in a kind of nervous way. He didn't have an eye for the environment, but was turned inside himself and his music. Sometimes he stopped, took his notebook and wrote down some musical ideas which he developed the next morning. After the walk, he went to his pub to get a coffee, smoked his pipe and read the newspaper. Sometimes he played chess, a game he learned from Haydn. Composing music was a hardship for Beethoven. He did this in what he called his Laboratorium Artificiosum. For Beethoven, composing meant to go th consciously through processes where he started with a vague idea that developed very slowly and tiresome. Not always in a predictable logic to a complete coherent and perfectly worked out piece of music. He composed with a very strict method. First he determined the genre and instruments from which he rarely changed the idea. As an exception confirms the rule, the 8th symphony was firstly thought as a piano concerto. After having thought about the key of the piece as well as the character, his attention went to the big outlines within the structure and the internal proportions of the different parts in the structure. Mozart and Haydn used to look first for a expositional team before developing the whole structure, but this was not the way Beethoven used to write his masterpieces. He usually started with a vague visualization of an idea within a tonality instead of a real team. Once the composition got more and more in shape, the team got its concrete status. Sketches of the Seventh Symphony contain a chaos of loose ideas in A major and in the 6-8 measure. Only in the design we can determine the typical rhythms that shall overshadow the first part of the symphony. Only after having tried all kinds of variations, six pages in total, the development of the team gets its clear and definite form. Beethoven did not break his head at the beginning of a composition with melody or rhythmical details. He had at first the whole general overview in mind. He wrote down the main ideas on the score at its suitable place, leaving empty bars in between so to check if the overall proportions are well balanced. It is known that, for example, Beethoven knew beforehand that he would insert a totally new theme in the middle of the development section of the Eroica symphony even before he knew how the symphony would start. In the next phrase he would concentrate on creating the connections between the sections like the bridges, the codas, the codettas. This was a very tiresome and complex task, especially when there are many modulations involved. The risk that he would lose track when the voyage of the piece became more complex was huge and he had a hard time to find the correct formula to bring teams back and how to introduce them. We can see from the sketches of the 6th symphony that the first part was written smoothly but that the speed of composing slowed down dramatically when the main theme had to return. Once the general overview and the tonal road was paved, the composition could be concretized 
Until then, Beethoven wrote his music on one stave, mostly with one voice and very rudimental. He had at that time already some general ideas about harmony, counterpoint and orchestration. The score became more filled up with phrases, harmonizations, etc. The longer Beethoven reworked the melody, the more irregular, more variety and less predictable it became, and therefore more original. At the end of the process of composing, the finishing touches were added. Signs for the dynamics, accents, articulations, dots, slurs, etc. By using the markings on almost every bar, we can see Beethoven's emotional engagement towards his composition. No composer before Beethoven did this, and most composers after him are more reluctant to do it this way. His publishers were driven mad by Beethoven's obsession with details, especially when they received a lot of letters from him about the length of a legato slur or the correct place of a sforzanto, or an accent. At the composition of music, vocal music, other rules were applied. The text was the leading part and the central item around which all the other parameters had to be adjusted. When in 1809 the Scottish publisher George Thompson asked Beethoven to write and arrange a few Scottish folk songs, Ludwig demanded to get a text so that he could give the correct expression to the music. This expression was embedded in the character of the key and the melody should contribute emotionally to the character of the words. He was very worried to find the correct metrical parameter between the text and the music and could walk back and forward in his room for hours and hours singing and shouting the words until the perfect combination was found. This metrical skeleton could have totally different melodies as Beethoven created a lot of different melodic sentences for the same text. And the, and the paradox is that he bumped into a melody that was not the most beautiful but the most fitted for the text. To give an example, he wrote different melodies for the text Gracias Agimus Tibi from the Missa in C, Major, Opus 86. These were so beautiful and perfect that they could be used as contra subjects in sonatas and symphonies. But he realized that the lyrical quality was in contrast to the essence of the Gloria that has to have the dogmatic dimensions and therefore should be more reluctant. He then chose a melody that was less interesting musically speaking, but more fit and effective for the character of the text. Beethoven used to work, meditate and rework on motifs, phrases, etc. for a very long time, even reworked parts of previous compositions until they were not only perfect, but kind of divine. <laughs>